Hey guys, Ivan here and in this video we have a couple of very interesting topics but we are starting with, as you can see, Regan Grimes update and this one in the caption says growing. What the hell is he doing? Why is he growing? He's 13, 12, 13 weeks out of Mr. Olympia. What does this even mean? Up until recently he was posting his physique updates and he was saying 16 weeks out, 15 weeks out, 14 weeks out, whatever and now he's growing all of a sudden. Does this mean that he decided to quit prepping for the Mr. Olympia? Well, let me show you exactly what he decided to do. I was saying Reno, we were at 254 yeah. at the backstage of Reno and that was my best for sure. But I think a 265, 270 on stage uh, would be really, really good. And I, I would feel super confident at that weight, you know, going in and, and doing some serious damage. You know, I want to really get in the top five. And uh, I don't think um, right now, I'm just not there yet. So, so um, this year we've decided to uh, to take it off and uh, you know continue this rhythm of putting the, this tissue on, and uh, we'll hit a show next year and uh, go to the Olympia. So you're making an yeah. announcement. You're yeah. officially yeah. officially uh, yeah not going to do it this year. I definitely think I've improved under that short period of time that we've had. I think I'd still be up, you know, uh, 254, probably two. 260 at least. So yeah, that's it. Regan Grimes is not gonna do the Mr. Olympia this year. What he said about the reasons for stopping this prep I think makes a lot of sense. I think this is definitely the right decision. Right here you're looking at his best edition ever that he just said in Reno. This is Legion Sports Fest. He was 254 and he looked definitely the best he ever looked. He competed at the Mr. Olympia like a week or two weeks before this show. He was prepped by Dorian Hamilton. And after the Mr. Olympia, he started working with Milo Sharchev. And no, he didn't make some crazy transformations, some crazy improvements in two weeks. No, he just peaked properly because he was coached by Milos. And Milos really knows his peak week protocols. He really knows how to dry these bodybuilders out. He really knows how to carve them up properly. So Regan was dry and blasting full and it really worked in his favor. Now he didn't win that show. He was second. He was beaten by Sean Clarida. But in Regan's defense, uh, Sean Clarida is like a mini Ronnie Coleman. He's just that complete. He's just short. Anyways, this was best edition of Regan Grimes ever. And he was only 2.54. In the callouts at the Mr. Olympia, in the callouts by numerical order, <laughs> Regan Grimes stood next to Big Remy. Fortunately or unfortunately, anyways, you could see what was the difference. Now, Big Remy is actually shorter than Regan. Regan is like 6 foot. And at that height, he can't be only 2.54. No. Not if he wants to be in that top 5 at the Mr. Olympia. And as you can see right here, compared to Big Remy, he is very complete. He has a really good structure. You can see all the traits that he really needs to be in that top 5 at the Mr. Olympia. What he lacks, the one thing, it's just size. Sure, he could be drier, but that's something, I mean, more conditioned. That's something you can fix in one prep in a couple of weeks. That's not a problem. What he needs is a full-blown long off-season where he's going to put on a lot of muscle. So as he says in that interview, he wants to be around 270. And that would be a decent number. With his shape, with his genetics, I think that would look much more impressive than most other guys because he has a really nice structure. Now, Big Grammy, if he wants to win the Mr. Olympia, he needs to be freaking big. He needs to be like 300 pounds. Regan, I don't think he really needs to. He would look definitely really, really good if he was 300, but I also feel like 270 would be a really competitive package. And if he actually does that, if he completes that, and I think he will with the guidance of Milo Sharchev, if he does that in the next year, if he makes those quality gains, he can actually be in that top 5. I can see him eventually getting in that top 5 at the Mr. Olympia, possibly higher. But what he needs to do, of course, is really put on some serious tissue. And you guys were probably following his prep this year. And yeah, he looked big, he looked awesome for sure. He was like 290, close to 300 in his off-season, which is not heavy enough for a guy at a 6 foot. He needs to get bigger than this. I was watching these photos and I thought, well, yeah, he looks big, he looks round, but does he look completely transformed? Like, for example, Samson Dowda right now or Mark Hector. And I'm going to talk about those guys in a second. So those guys made some serious progress and Regan didn't. Not yet. He made maybe some changes, 
but not enough, definitely not enough. So I think he really made a good decision and taking that one year off, I think it would be even better if he took like two years for growth, but I know he loves to compete, he is a competitor, he needs that, that publicity, so he will definitely compete next year, I think still it's a great decision that he skipped Mr. Olympia this year, because he probably wouldn't be, he definitely wouldn't be in top 10, come on guys, top 10 today, in this Mr. Olympia, that's going to be insane for anybody to crack the top 10, who cracks the top 10 this year, they are like a top tier bodybuilder basically, and Regan is not on that level yet, so it's definitely the right decision to skip it this year, hopefully next Next year he will make some serious gains and then he's going to be actually competitive what do you guys think if you guys are looking for a really good pre-workout i will suggest to you old school labs vintage blast it tastes so amazing it's not just pumped up with a lot of caffeine it has a lot of focus pump endurance strength type of ingredients so the link is down below if you use my code ivan you get a 15 percent discount and also it helps me a lot and this is a way to show me your support if you want to do it that much it would really be helpful i would definitely appreciate it very much so so click on the link down below and if you want to buy something just use the code even thank you guys all right next we have mark hector who is about one week out of arnold classic uk who is also a serious threat to that title even though yeah he has andrew jack competing and sure he has james hollingshead but of course, Andrew Jack is a far more serious threat than James Collinshead. I mean, James won some shows, but who did he beat, really? He beat this bunch, for example, last year. So Regan Grimes, not even top 10 at the Mr. Olympia, not really. Uh, Jamie Johal, I mean, this guy never won a pro show. Mark Hector, who was like 30 pounds lighter last year. So James, I mean, he is great. He's, I love him, I love his physique, but... I don't think he's really that much of a threat like Andrew Jack. So Mark Hector is definitely going to have his hands full because Andrew is competing. Can he beat him? A lot of people actually have him potentially winning this show. <sighs> Look, I mean, I think he looks awesome. I think he looks great. And the changes that he made are absolutely insane. But Andrew Jack, man, come on, come on. If Andrew comes uh, again at, I don't know what he was, 80%, that's going to be enough to win any of these second tier shows so i think andrew is definitely a heavy favorite to win this show but mark hector looks amazing right now and i also watched the podcast that he did with fua and he was talking about the way his coach is is doing things so i'm expecting this guy to to peak really well so he's probably gonna make some crazy change in that last peak week so he's going to be really good but if you look at this photo for example he doesn't look that good he definitely doesn't look like somebody who would beat andrew jack or james hollingshead he definitely couldn't do that but this year this is not just a good lighting this is not just the angle he actually added a lot of muscle let me actually show you how much muscle he added the last time i competed like i said was 240 yeah. with an extra 25 pounds of muscle on top We've still the small waist and the filled out frame and peaked properly, so I'm actually really full. Yeah. Definitely I can beat these guys. I'm actually amazed that you put on as much weight as you have and the waist hasn't grown at all. So you heard a guy, he actually added 25 freaking pounds of muscle in that past off season. And I do believe him. This looks like 25 pounds of freaking muscle. And Fu had actually made a good point. He did not increase his waist size. Yeah, he is very genetically blessed in that regard. So whatever he does, his waist is always going to be small. He doesn't have to really worry about that. But still, his waist right now looks phenomenal. And he looks so much bigger. In his upper body, in his shoulders, chest and arms... But as far as legs, how much did his legs progress? I mean, he added 25 pounds of freaking tissue and some of that for sure went to legs quite a lot, I would have to say. But is it enough? Is it really enough? Because I don't think so. I think it's going to hold him back, unfortunately, even this year. So last year, it was quite visible, especially compared to somebody like James Hollingshead, who has incredibly big tree trunks and also andrew jack is probably even better in that regard he probably has even more sweeping quads so for him for hector to be compared to these two guys and to look good he needs much much bigger and fuller legs how much did his legs improve i mean be my guest you tell me i think they are better but are they good enough I mean, they do look kind of proportionate. It's not like Brandon Curry situation. They do look fine, but 
I think his upper body is just way too big for his legs. I think his legs do need to get even bigger for there to be a proper symmetry in his physique. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think it's going to hold him back. And I feel like that's why he's not going to win Arnold Classic UK. That's why he's not going to beat Andrew Jack. I don't know if he's going to beat James Hollingshead. That's probably going to be much, much closer. But I also totally forgot about Martin Fitzwater, who also looks amazing who was pushing Andrew Jack in those back poses, who I actually have in second at this show, and I think it's going to be James and Mark Hector battling for third. I don't know, is it just me, or does it seem like Martin doesn't really have that many fans? I don't feel like people really love his personality, but is he a good bodybuilder? Hell yeah, and does he deserve to place high? I think he absolutely does. I listen to him and he's really passionate about bodybuilding. I feel like he is one of those guys who are 100% all bodybuilding. I don't think he cares about much other than bodybuilding in his life. And those guys usually do well. So I am expecting him to beat guys like James Hollingshead who has been cheating on his diet like every four days. And obviously it works, he can do that, he can get away with it, with his crazy metabolism, he can still get shredded, and he did get shredded, but he was talking about doing this because he wants those mental breaks, he wants to enjoy his prep more, enjoy food, but like a year ago he was talking about how he doesn't care about food at all. So he started contradicting himself lately quite a bit, and I don't like that. I was a big fan of James and his personality, but lately my perception has kind of changed. I don't really like him that much anymore. I think he's contradicting himself, and I think with his approach, I don't know how focused he stayed, how hungry he really is. It seems like he's very much relaxed, and he was doing this prep alone, at least that's what he said. He said that he was making his own decisions. He had a friend taking a look at him, Jordan Peters, and telling him his opinion. But he didn't have a coach, at least that's what he said on Fuad's podcast. However, apparently now he tags Patrick Tour. He says, coach, Patrick Tour, team Tour. So it looks like he decided to, to hire Patrick for the, the final weeks of the prep. So again, he's kind of contradicting himself, he's changing his opinions a little bit too much. I mean, I get it, he's a little bit unsure of himself, of his decisions, and that's fine, that doesn't make him a bad person or anything like that, but it kind of makes me lose respect a little bit if he doesn't stay congruent with his words. So it is what it is, he's now with Patrick Tour again, we'll see how is that gonna work out. I'm expecting him to be really good, but, you know, to beat guys like Andrew Jack, I don't really see that happening. He has some flaws. Like, if you look at his photo, he looks like a giant and he looks shredded. But, I mean, his back double bicep, for example, is pretty bad. He has a lot of flaws, like his waist, his, his abs. So, he's definitely going to be exposed by, for example, Andrew Jack. And I think also Martin Fitzwater. I think he's going to be battling it out for third uh, against Mark Hector. So, maybe James is going to win a medal. Maybe not. That's just my opinion. If you guys think otherwise you think he's going to win the show or whatever tell me down below in the comment section if you guys have been following my channel you probably have heard a lot about brandon harding and his journey uh, of winning a pro card and yeah he won a pro card but his decision after winning that pro card was to immediately after that show have a pro debut now i didn't really voice my opinion on this but i thought it was a bad decision. Why would you do that? Can you win a Mr. Olympia qualifier already? Maybe, probably not, but sometimes you should stop when you are at the top, when you still have that sweet taste in your mouth. You don't want to end the prep with that bitter taste uh, from a loss. So the last show he did, he won that show. He won his class, he won the overall, he got his pro card, and that's when he should have stopped. First of all, he peaked a couple of times before that. How many times can your body really peak properly? That's really hard to guess, but usually it's like three times max. And that would have been his last chance. Maybe he would peak properly, maybe not. But he would have definitely uh, tortured his body with all the gear that he needs to use, with staying in that deficit, maintaining condition. That's probably the worst thing, you know. When you have to push, when you have to dig deep to get conditioned, when you're super motivated, when you know you want to achieve that goal, then it's 
kind of easier, you know, it's hard, but it's easier mentally. When you're already shredded and you need to maintain certain conditioning, that's tough. That's really tough. I know from experience. So once he won that pro card, he should have just stopped right there and got back to eating and trying to grow. Instead, he decided to compete, to do a pro show. And he started prepping, but something went wrong. He had a bad injection and he got a really bad swelling in his glutes, in his hamstrings. Now, I have no idea why this happened. It's not his first time. Is he using some horrible, uh, dirty gear from UK? I don't know what gear is like in UK. I'm assuming it's better than over here in Serbia. But I know a lot of people who compete and use gear in Serbia. And those infections are really rare. And I think they happened to, to Brandon a couple of times. So at this point, he should probably think about changing his underground lab. Whatever he's using, it's not very good. And I heard about some really bad stories, horrible stories, uh, how these infections and that in some cases people were losing limbs or parts, chunks, big chunks of meat in their glutes. You know, career-ending consequences. So he should definitely rethink that. And also this guy was talking about having some really bad reactions to trend, which I don't see how it makes sense. I mean, I know so many people who are using it. I never heard about anything like this. Even in theory, it doesn't make sense. So I don't know if this guy is <laughs> delusional or he's using just some horrible kind of gear. But something is off. These things should not be happening. Anyways, that's why he stopped his prep. As you can see right here in the caption, he says, prep is finally over. He also says, I already feel uh, quite ill with all the swelling. So he's not doing very well right now and he's sick, you know, he has that problem. He actually went to a, to a really good doctor and they told him that it's pretty much okay. He's not going to have a surgery or anything like that. The swelling is slowly going away. He's going to have to probably use uh, some medication, as he says he's already using. And sure, he's going to get that fixed and uh, he's going to move on with his off season. But honestly, I feel like it would have been the best decision if he just stopped right there. If he actually stopped, he probably wouldn't have had this infection, but that's something he could not have known. Now, he is forced to stop this prep. It's not even his decision to say it's a right decision. It's, it's something that just happened. And for whatever reason, he stopped the prep. And I think it's a good thing because... Uh, he, he ended this season by winning a pro card and he probably wouldn't have gotten a Mr. Olympic qualification this year. I mean, this guy has 30 freaking pounds to add before he reaches his weight cap now in pro league. He had 20 pounds before, like 15, 20 pounds. Now he has 10 more pounds in IVB pro league. So he's not going to get there in one year, no. But if he's closer to that weight cap, if he's like... 10, 15 pounds shy, that's gonna be definitely a much better package, more competitive package, and most likely a Mr. Olympia qualifying package, and I think he actually is going to be at the Mr. Olympia stage next year, or the year after, but I can definitely see him there. How long is it gonna take him to get in that top 10? I think that's gonna take a couple of years. Top 5? I think it's going to happen also in like maybe 5 years. I have no idea, really. I'm just predicting here. I'm just uh, speculating. Whatever you guys think about Brandon Harding's physique and whether it would have been better if he competed in a pro league now or is it better to do it next year, whatever your thoughts are, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, guys. And for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.